I believe that you know this Vikram Kumar. He is, of course, the Chief Executive of Internet New Zealand. So please welcome Vikram Kumar. Um, I was bringing my elephants, but they told me that parking at Sky City and the traffic is mad, so I decided to leave the elephants uh, back. Uh, big shout out to people who've come from overseas. Uh, welcome to NetHui. Thank you for coming. Uh, one of those was uh, is Pia Wu, and I thought her tweet was quite funny, which was, it's good to see a mayor or a deputy mayor outside Foursquare. Uh, but I guess that's the kind of stuff that we get into. So um, my job is to spend 10 or 15 minutes talking about what we're going to talk about in the next uh, three days. And um, yep. So last year we were asked when we put together the inaugural NetHui, what's the logic of having a NetHui? Um, and, and so that, this was what was in my mind, that I really love this saying which says, the internet is for everyone. It, it's, it's a really simple way of saying of so many things that we believe in, around openness and transparency and inclusiveness and all the benefits that we can get and all the uh, need for having everyone uh, having the opportunity to use the internet for whatever they see fit. Um, the consequence of the internet is for everyone is that everyone has a stake in the internet. And um, this is far more difficult to think about and far more difficult to, how do we make this into practice? That if the internet is for everyone, then everyone has a stake. How do you translate that into people actually having, being able to make a difference? And that's really what the logic for NetHui was that we have an ability for approximately 500 people to be able to be involved in discussions and find out what other people are thinking and being able to express their views and each one being um, as valuable as anybody else. But one of the problems we have at the moment is that the future of the internet is being negotiated by governments behind closed doors. And that's something that um, a lot of us are concerned about. And before I get on to anything else, this is the first thing that I wanted to talk about, is you can't buy into the logic that the internet is for everyone and then negotiate its future behind closed doors. Those two simply do not go together. And unfortunately, we've all moved on from three-letter acronyms to four-letter acronyms. <laughs> However, the problem still remains. Um, and for those of you who've been following it from the beginning of the year, uh, particularly in the United States, we had SOPA and we had PIPA. And um, more recently, we've been having ACTA. And if anything, um, the 2012 is the year when people power became much more evident in trade treaty or partnership negotiations. And uh, SOPA and PIPA in particular, there was quite a bit of movement against that, uh, including in New Zealand, but uh, most particularly in the United States. And ACTA is wounded but not dead. And the reality is that there's always going to be new things that replace these acts because the underlying movements and the underlying drivers haven't changed. And so it isn't a, you know, we've got people power that's managed to forestall or uh, keep back these at the moment, but it's unlikely that this is a one-off effort. The battle with not so much the four-letter acronyms, but definitely closed doors will continue. And I wanted to talk about two of the battles that are happening right now. The first one is the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, or the TPPA, which is supposed to be a 21st century partnership of equals, or um, at least trying to outline what countries working together in the 21st century must look like. And it's got various problems, and I think the irony of closed doors 
is that we all depend on leaks to understand what the treaty provisions are likely to look like. And we being members of parliament, we being the US members of, of their Congress, it's everyone. And you have to look at this and say, how can this be logical? How can this be acceptable that we are negotiating complex deals that are going to last us and is meant to last us for a long, long time? And the only way we can talk about it is via leaked text. And so we can't have governments and trade negotiators using leaks on the internet as the primary way of communicating what's going on. It simply does not stack up. And what I would ask you and urge you is to think about how we can get a fair deal. This is a campaign uh, being launched today at 6.30, and if you do have the time, I'd, I'd ask you to uh, come along for this launch. There are a number of uh, organizations that have got behind this and have said that particularly the copyright and intellectual property, the negotiation position that have been f uh, put forward by the United States will not give New Zealand a fair deal. The second four-letter acronym, which is perhaps as not well known, but is certainly causing a lot of concern, is the WCIT, which is the World Conference on International Telecommunications. The, this meeting will be held in Dubai at the end of this year. It is the ITU, or the International Telecommunications Union, which is an intergovernmental body negotiating um, who and how government should control the internet at the moment. And some of the provisions being put forward are quite scary. Um, and there is this continuing issue that we need to keep across. And just to emphasize, these aren't one-off four-letter acronyms. This is an ongoing thing that I'm sure we're going to discuss both at NetHui but also going forward. So just looking at what are the issues at NetHui, um, it's sometimes really hard to grasp the breadth of issues that we are going to be talking about over the next few days. Um, and that's quite reflective of the internet. It, it affects pretty much everything everyone does, whether or not you yourself are on the internet. And so what I did was I took the program and made a Moodle, uh, a Wordle out of it, which is um, a, a neat way of trying to figure out, you've got all of this text, but just trying to find out how does this text actually make sense. So I put the program into a Wordle, and that's what I got. Um, obviously, the internet is quite prominent, and many of the issues will be around the internet. Some of the larger issues that are coming up are around education, security, law, globalization, access, business, and um, certainly the magic word, openness. And it's a jumble of things that we have to look at over the next three days, but that hopefully is a sense um, I think you did expect to come to an internet conference, and we certainly had a flavor of that this morning, so it's certainly good to see that the internet features prominently in the program. So that's one way of uh, thinking about the kinds of issues that we'll be talking about in the next three days. But um, one of the things when I was looking at this was to say, that's really not satisfactory in a real sense because it sort of gives you a flavor of what we're going to talk about, but you would probably have got that in the program directly. So what I wanted to do uh, was to spend a few minutes sharing with you uh, my way of looking at Internet issues, and that may or may not help some of you, but it's certainly something that um, I just spent a few minutes talking about and how I use that framework so that if, if, you, know, you might want to think about that. And my thesis is that we have three power blocks. There's government, there's corporates, and there's communities. And so, yes, it is about businesses and it is about individuals, but collectively at a power block, they're potentially more at uh, government, corporates, and business. And for me, many of the internet issues is simply a way of how the internet affects each one of these three communities and how the relationship between these three communities are the cause or the place where much of the issues that we talk about are going to happen. So that's my framework of thinking. Uh, three communities, government, corporate communities. 
and three segments are all um, using the internet, being affected by the internet, and the relationships amongst them. And so I just wanted to spend a, one or two minutes telling you about the types of issues that I see and how I use this framework. So for me, the relationship between government and communities in particular is one that has a several, quite a few topics that we're going to be talking about, right from access, which is things like the rural internet, how government uses the internet to deliver services, particularly where they spend a lot of money, which is health and education, uh, certainly about how it works itself, which is open government, and digital inclusion, online services, human rights. So I think there's several topics over the next three days which look at this relationship between government and communities and how the internet is impacting that relationship. Between government and corporates, um, there are discussions on the economy, on the economic impact, particularly on fiber and ultra-fast broadband, what are the opportunities that it opens up for New Zealand, and also about how government as a regulator, particularly around data and cloud computing, is affecting what corporates and businesses do. So that's the way I suppose I use this diagram. And then I look at the diagram and say, in some topics, there are more than one relationship that works at, that comes into play. And so, for example, the issues around privacy or regulating online behavior in some way is both a function of government and communities, but also between corporates and communities. And when you look at some of these issues, you, you need to keep in mind that both of those are at play. Um, the other way I use this diagram is to try and think through that even if you have more than one relationship, is one relationship stronger or more important than the other one? And one of the topics over the next few days is uh, on convergence, which is being able to deliver the same content through a number of different channels. Um, and whether you have different rules, particularly for different content depending upon the channel. So convergence is definitely happening. Um, convergence is primarily an issue between corporate and communities, but there's an expectation that the government will in some way regulate what corporates can do. Copyright is uh, a topic that almost invariably comes up in most internet-related issues because of the way the rights owners continue to try and break the internet to protect their own rights. Um, it's something where all relationships will, will, are required to be thought about. Um, primarily copyright is between corporates and communities, but it is increasingly uh, being influenced both by what government does, whether it's in relation to corporates or in relation to communities. And this is the final one, which is really about um, several issues coming up over the next few days, which are quite wide, um, and everyone needs to participate, whether it's internet access, cybersecurity, or the governance of the internet. So that's all I had. Um, hopefully that's given you a bit of a flavor of what we'd like to see discussed over the next few days. Um, quite clear for us, at least, that the Internet is for everyone. And thank you for being here and participating in this discussion. There are threats that we need to be mindful of. Um, and the width of themes at NetHui means there's almost certainly something that you'll find really interesting where you have a lot to contribute. I certainly encourage you to go to sessions where you know nothing about, because you'll find people there who know a lot about that topic. And some of the most rewarding discussions are when you put a fresh perspective into areas that you really know not that much about. Thank you so much. <laughs>